here I am Suffolk Triumph yet again yeah this time oh, Triumph Tiger 660 Sport yeah marvellous I have ridden it before I do like it look at that clock yeah bit Game Boy-ish oh listen to that triple engine yeah uh, what we'll do is we'll get going and I'll uh, say a bit more about it yeah so we're off very smooth that, that triple engine we're in a 30 so we've got to be cautious and what have we got Mickey Mouse mirrors absolutely fantastic vision out of them I've got to say straight off uh, the clock um, well it's sort of Game Boy-ish but you know it's a modern clock for a modern bike in a modern world and this is a much more practical type of bike we've got an adjustable screen as well I've got it up to the max what I think I remember last time is uh, actually putting it lower produced less buffeting for me but I think because because of my height I think what happens is it hits me in the face so I notice it more but we'll give it a chance and we'll get going and then I might drop it down we've got the same engine that's in the Trident hot clutch very light and easy right let me get the visor down that's better brakes just first touch absolutely fine but back one feels very keen actually listen to that engine so from fourth at 25 miles an hour it just pulls lovely yeah so it is 80 brake horsepower, maybe 81 brake horsepower. That car's going too quick, I set off after it because I assumed we were in a 60, but we're not. Yeah, 80 brake horsepower and about 80 newton metres of torque. Is that right? I'll check that because I might be wrong. So when we do the walk round, remind me. It's got Showa front forks uh, and I, sh I assume a Showa monoshock behind that. I'll have to check that. I assume, I assume so. But well, only Nissan brakes doesn't have the Brembo brakes. When we get on the dual carriageway, that'll say a lot more about the bike because, let's be honest, if you're buying this, you're not going to be shy about going on the dual carriageway, are you? You're planning on a bit of touring, a bit of commuting. Handling, absolutely fine, yeah. Even one-handed. Very smooth is what I'd say as well. Very smooth. I can see why it's uh, won all the awards it's won. Very nice in this blue as well. It's almost a Suzuki blue, isn't it? I, it reminds me of my V-Strom was this colour. And of course its competitors are the V-Strom and the Versa and of course we can't forget the Italian competitors as well
legal limit, no trouble at all. But I do have some buffeting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and put the screen down while we're going along and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, that moves it from my head onto my chest. And I'm not sure which I prefer. Easy enough to do on the move. I think it's actually better up for me. So, I mean, that's going to be completely personal, isn't it? But very comfortable. Very comfortable at 70 miles an hour. 5,000 revs just over into a head-on wind and it's quite a strong wind so again on the brakes absolutely fine it does handle exceptionally well but I have noticed as well that the adventure style bikes tend to make you feel like that anyway because you're so much higher up uh, it tends to make it feel like you're leaning a bit more than you actually are next we've got the washboard road test out that shower suspension what I'm finding is the is the indicator it's just a little bit low for me obviously that's just the thing about being used to it so as we approach the washboard road it's dual carriageway it'll just test out that suspension I think at a, at a 43 millimeter performance and it does feel like it rides them really well a bit of a buzz coming through the handlebars but very good and now of course the bumps get bigger but further apart yeah <laughs> uh, very impressed I was before and I am again I mean, I'm always going on about a winter bike and I think this would make an excellent winter bike but it would also make an excellent bike you know, for touring going to the shops, going to work, commuting nice and easy, yeah uh, and now of course we're on to the Suffolk Road which is just your general bumpy Old. the sort of road that you're going to find yourself on if you actually do go touring we've got the added bonus with this one as the sign says here um, big people, small people bicycles, horses, cars hell and all we've had down here I've seen everything there's not a lot I haven't seen yeah of course we've got the potholes the gravel the lumps the bumps even the hedgerow that sticks out now it's summer up here I'll stop and do a walk round just so you can see it
There we go. Where's the side stand? Oh, it's back there. There we go. Over we go. Engine off. And let's have a look. Seat height. Oh, I think it's about 840 or something like that. But again, I shall check. But for now, there you go. What do you think? It's a lovely colour, isn't it? Triumph Tiger 660 Sport in blue. Looks just lovely, doesn't it? I mean, it is an adventure bike and that's what it looks like. It's got twin brakes on the front, the Nissan brakes, the Showa forks, I thought were 43 millimeter, they're not, they're 41 millimeter. Alloy wheels, practical. Three into one exhaust, tucked away under there, low down means easier for luggage and um, your passenger don't get so hot yeah that's what I'd say about that uh, Nissan brake on the rear and again show up mono mono shock behind uh, adjusted there on the other side if we have a look yeah just there Seat height, 835 millimetres, so not too high. So maybe an option if you wanted an adventure bike and you not tall enough for the for the big boys. Oh, this would be ample. It just looks in proportion for everything. The seat's dead comfy um, and you can get all the luggage and stuff you need on the back. It's got that hugger down there to help keep uh, the mud at bay. With those alloy wheels, it's going to be pretty simple to clean through winter, isn't it? Which it makes me think it'd be a good winter bike. The screen, as you've seen, fully adjustable. The Mickey Mouse mirrors, excellent. Uh, amongst the best I've seen. And it doesn't have a plastic brake reservoir for a change that's nice to see the lights well you know it's a it's a modern bike it's a modern adventure bike if you don't like the look you don't like the look but if you want something practical that actually is a decent looking bike then there isn't a lot else out there yeah anyway let's get back on and we'll see how we go yeah right here we go, ignition on, Brrr, ding, yeah, oh, lovely. Straight off like that, dead easy. And we're off, on to the senses test. Oh, bicycles, uh, you won't notice, but whilst doing the walk around, we had just about everything listed previously at the beginning of the ride yeah but of course we're in a 30 now bumpy although there's a massive dip there and of course uh, what I didn't mention was the brake horsepower uh, is 81 brake horsepower and only 63 newton meters of torque yeah so i may have corrected that on the screen i may not but that's what it is yeah i, I just checked before i got back on but then the senses yeah so what would it taste like well anything blue in the sweet line in fact in the food line He's, ne he's never good for you, which means it's always nice. I guess we could go healthy and say blueberries, but I'm thinking some of those uh, blue Smarties or blue M&Ms or blue... Oh, watch that gravel, yeah. Or blue... Skittles, yeah, 
they're all marvellous aren't they well that's what this would taste like yeah and then we've got smell well it's a new bike it's barely done any miles and it is uh, just smelling of warm metal and plastic But you can't say no more than that. Crikey, there's so much gravel on the road. But this just handles everything. The bumps, the bends, the twists, the dips. Oh, just so well, you know, for the money you pay. And I think they are now knocking at £9,000. I might be wrong. So they're not cheap. Uh, but you're getting an exceptional bike. the next sense uh, to look at to look at yeah it's an adventure bike if you don't like adventure bikes you're not going to be happy with this but if crikey come round the bend on the wrong side of the road it looks like a smart clean bike and with all the luggage on it looks the business for touring and I have no doubt that you could tour a long way on it. I think I think in a lot of ways it does look better than some of the adventure bikes because it's not so extreme which I think is possibly why I uh, try and added the sport bit on it. Yeah course if you were really going like Dakar style you would have to have the 900 Rally Pro or something like that I reckon this wouldn't be enough you'd find the bottom of the suspension etc etc yeah uh, to touch and feel it's triumph quality it, it's their budget adventure bike uh, but it's top notch, you know, don't let that, just because you're paying less than you are for a, a 900 or a 1200, don't think you're getting anything less, you know, you get it just a smaller engine, something's missing, some electronics missing, stuff like that, but it's still a well-made motorcycle. Yeah, so to touch and feel, uh, it's just marvellous. The sound, that triple engine is lovely, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's a, it's a nice... It's a nice sound. Very sporty. But very smooth, unlike, you know, smoother than the twins. Perhaps not as slick as a four. But the best of both worlds, is what I'd say. I just had this thought of blue licorice as well. And then we're on to the sixth sense. You know, how does it make me feel? That gut instinct about it. Well, I'll leave that till we get back off the A12. Yeah. Down the dual carriageway, it's an absolute breeze. And today is a windy day. So how does it make me feel? Well, it's a bike for a purpose. If you could only have one bike and you did lots of everything, this would be ideal. That's why it's won its awards, because you can go around the twisties on a weekend, you can load it up with gear and go off camping or touring, 
bed and breakfast it, whatever you like. I've not been too up on it. I'm pretty sure it would be absolutely fine because my Bonneville's fine, my 500's fine. You know, I have no problem to up. Um, does it stir the emotions like a classic bike or a sports bike? No, it is quite sporty. But it also just its presence makes you tend to be a bit more relaxed about it, which some people might say is a good thing. So that's where I am with it. Would I have one? Most certainly I would have one. It would be an ideal commuter. It would be an ideal winter bike when you can't go crazy anyway because of the leaves, the rain, the snow, the ice and it provides a bit of weather protection so yeah uh, a very nice bike uh, reasonable money Yeah, the, those brakes are absolutely ample. It does put you in a position where it makes you feel like you've either got to rev it right through the range and change gear or change very early. That sort of under 4,000 you want to be changing if you're in any sort of speed restriction and if you're racing a little bit then you want to be going through the gears taking that those revs right round but here we are back um, something you've got to do all the time when you're doing a demo ride yeah take it back I've really enjoyed it uh, really nice yeah uh, I'll get in here because there is something I've got to tell you of course let's get it into neutral there you go side stand down over we go ignition off let's get round here And there you go. No centre stand. Yeah. Marvellous bike though. Triumph Tiger Sport 660.